G'day and welcome to JD's Defender Cam. Today I'll be looking at this winch which is an XD9000 made by Warren and we'll be pulling it apart and seeing what's wrong with it. Okay, so in my last video, uh, which is about the winch self-removal, I showed on the grass outside how bad this rust was on this, and I was interested to see how far it would be once I started cleaning it off. So I started cleaning this off, and it's pretty shocking. Look how thick that rust is. Like, over all the past years, I've been doing up quite a few bits of stationary machinery that's been covered in water, it's been, they've been sitting outside and I've never seen rust this bad and this thick. And considering this was originally probably painted as well, uh, it's not that good. But it does crack off easy enough. Like that. Okay, so I've finished pretty much chipping off all this flaky rust with this cold chisel and a hammer and it's looking more promising than what I thought it would be. Like there's a little, there's a divot around here where the bottom few rungs of rope have been, where it kind of the rust had built up to, but if you look across the top of this plane, it's pretty flat. There's like a few little peaks and things, but I think we might be able to salvage this, this uh, barrel and what it might need is a bit of a maybe a sandblast and then put it onto the onto the onto the lathe and the lathe will just get rid of all the little bumps and so on and and then paint it up but that will be in the next video the part two of this uh, rebuild before we get started with the actual stripping down of the winch I thought I'd just show you some of these bits of paper here. Now, before you start uh, pulling apart your winch or spending any time on it, what you want to make sure is that you can buy, still buy parts for that winch in case you actually need it. Unless, of course, you're a genius with a mill or a CNC mill or whatever and you can actually make parts yourself, but that's a bit time consuming and a bit more expensive. But if you can do it, go ahead because it'd be awesome to be a custom winch. But what I've found is that the XD9000 still has parts made for it and you can still buy them readily available. And there you go. Shows all the part numbers for all the parts on the winch. And then have a nice little diagram pull part diagram. Now this is very very useful for this project because A we can see what the winch and the order of the gears go in plus we can if some parts worn out we have its number and we can get its part code and we can order a spare part for it to fit in. Now these next pieces of paper are for well the phone on the top here is as you can read it's the winch motor test, so we'll go through and do this. It's very, very basic, and it's even got a nice little diagram someone's drawn there. Now this is the way the solenoids work, and the way they are actually joined together. Really, really easy to see diagram. Um, all these pages, I'll put up links where to find them uh, on the internet, and you can have a look at them yourselves, download them. They're all free. So, yeah, very basic wiring. Some winches will have a more complex wiring because they might have a volt regulator in it. Depends on how new they are and how good they are. They're still based with solenoids. There's quite a few different diagrams. That one's got the actual motor in the drawing. This one's very useful because it is the worn solenoid box and the way it looks. Remember on the last video it looked like this 
and now see it's exactly the same and so, so from this it's pretty muddy and there's a bit of rust out in the form of some of these terminals to this from this it will probably need new wiring to this and as we can see it has the brown wire black wire white wire brown wire green wire where they will go and then it tells you where to hook up your wires to go to which terminals on the actual winch and where the power wires come in and really you only really need this but the other ones are really good because they're basic and they're generic um, so you can use it on any winch and it's not going to really mind blow you but they're all basically the same so from this to this this is the plate that the solenoids sit on that we took off before now I think it's pretty funny but in the last video I showed you how to take it off and what I didn't show you in the last video was that these happened they've actually sheared off and so a mixture of a bit of rust and a lot of fatigue over time has meant that there's these bolts have failed so I'm still gonna to have to drill the rest of the bolt out because there's like this goes through the top this will be around the other way this goes through the top there's a bolt under this which is on this edge and then there's a nut underneath the other underneath the bull bar but what I've painted this with is uh, is well I'll get the stuff it's just basic old school red oxide primer it's a nice color but I'll probably keep it up but I'll put a second coat on it tomorrow and at the moment it's still dry it takes four hours to go tacky but it's about three hours since I painted this uh, and that should look alright so this is what it looked like before to this now it's been a day and it's been drying and it's all nice and shiny and I don't think we'll need another second coat I'll just leave it like that now it's time to start testing the electronic parts but not we won't test the motor yet but I'll show you that these terminals if they're moving or anything like that which none of these are uh, there's probably a serious problem and these are also in good nick so I'm not sure whether these are the original ones but they probably are they have this sort of coating on it that you see on car batteries and that sort of stuff and you paint it on and it, on it, and it actually uh, kind of inhibits rust and water and repels water and yeah it keeps things all nice and new looking underneath it's a new morning and look it's kind of cloudy but it's clearing up so that should be alright what we're going to do now is once I've got this cleaned up we're going to start testing the solenoid so I've pulled them apart and cleaned up all these solenoids um, if you want to know these nuts on here are half inch and these ones are three eighths but this will vary depending on what the manufacturer is but that's what these ones are anyway but the first thing which uh, I've noticed about them is and possibly what ones which will be faulty uh, so these ones here are good I think there's like barely any movement in those contacts inside this one here there's a little bit of movement in there but you can hear it and this one's the worst it's got heaps inside now I think this is because something like either probably the little spring that keeps it down is gone on the inside and that means if you go over a bump if it clicks up there it's intermittently getting a bit of power if it is making contact and that's not a good thing because that means your winch is getting power without you wanting it to so these will probably be faulty but we'll see if they work um, on the, and see whether they're actually working between these but I will probably will replace them because I don't want to risk just the winch coming on by itself alrighty so we're about to test the solenoids and I've brought the uh, Defender's battery in and I've hooked up these alligator clips with wires on them uh, they're off an old car charger which is stuffed now but these still work fine and they're perfect for this sort of thing 
So what we have over here is the four solenoids and we've got a multimeter and we have it on the ohm setting so the resistance and what I've done is hooked up uh, one of the uh, the black wire from the multimeter to one of the big terminals and the other wire to the other big terminal because that's where power is being switched across we want to know if there's any resistance in these and if there is uh, a great deal of resistance or it stays infinite like it, this that means it's uh, an overload so basically it has an infinite amount of ohms there which means there's no power getting across whatsoever and you don't want that when we put power to it because that should close the switch and you should get one under one ohm and the less ohms you get uh, the better it is but realistically we want very very little resistance so we'll click it, you should be able to hear this click hear that click and as we see on the zero zero so this solenoid is good at the back we'll go to another one wire at the back click as you see that one's zero as well Too bad. Now for these front two, do the same thing. Click. There you go. Multimeter goes to zero. Full power going through there. Now we're down to this dodgy one that I was shaking around. Now let's see what happens here. So watch the multimeter. Hmm. So that's different, isn't it? So what it's doing is it's staying on permanently. It doesn't matter whether you click it on or doesn't do anything whatsoever so that's staying on you definitely don't want that because otherwise you're getting power the winch all the time and you're going to end up burning out your motor or doing some real damage to the front of your car so that's definitely not any good but the other three they're fine so only need one more solenoid and we should be good for that solenoid box what I'm doing now is just testing the resistance of these cables these big ones uh, this one here is the F2 cable, so it goes to the F2 terminal on the actual motor itself. As we see, its resistance is very low, so you know this wire is good. Now we have the F1 cable, and it's good. And here we have the big cable, which is the power cable, the main power cable coming from the battery itself. And it's got very, very little resistance, so we know all these wires, move them around a bit. We know all these wires are pretty good. Um, there might be a few places there is a join on this, and but moving it around is not doing that much. So we know that this cable is still good, and we can still use them. So I just tested this motor. Um, it moved a little bit, and it sparked the absolute shit out. So there might be a uh, a little short in there, but I'm going to replace the brushes anyway. I'll check them and see what they're like, and see if there's any shorts in the motor itself. Um, because I don't really want to try it again. Oh yeah, and uh, this is the procedure you use here. If you can read that. This is uh, down below in the in the description. And there's a link there and you can go download it. And it's very simple. Exactly the same as how I wired up, except I'd use, L I'd use uh, your jumper leads or something onto these. I tried to use mine, which are hanging up there but they're a bit buggered, they're not really working that well and they weren't working at all actually so I had to try something different but yeah so there's a bit of life in there, it did move a little bit but I think it's just all seized up because if the inside of the barrel is like this was there could be a whole chunk of rust in there and we don't want that so I don't want to push the motor in case I burn it out any further so we're going to take this end cap of the motor off now. There's a few signs in here that show that this actually has had probably new brushes put in before. And the first one is you can see all this silicon they've used to seal it up, which is good. And then other ones is that 
these bolts are, prob are well, problem guessing this one here is was uh, is uh, not the original because this one here is a three eighth, but this big one here is it's a ten mil, so it's slightly different, slightly bigger in size and. Yeah, so we're going to pull this off and check inside and see what those brushes are like. So what I'm currently doing is just cracking the seal. Like, I don't know if they would have put, someone's put silicon or any of that sort of stuff or there could be, this is, I know there's a lot of muddy dirt sort of stuff down between this uh, the the uh, the motor carrier uh, block and the motor itself. So we've got to crack that round all the way to get it freed up a bit, so we can pull it off. Now, when you pull it off, you want to make sure that the armature inside comes out with it, uh, just so it's not left behind and you're not damaging it. So. So we have a little gap here now between the motor and drum support and the motor, uh, but and you can see it does spin around a little bit. So that's on the. So we know that the arbiter and that isn't actually rusted into the motor casing, but it's not wanting to come off. So we'll have to give it a bit of persuasion with this. Make sure you don't not take the screwdriver down too far and damaging anything underneath. Um, I might chop this up and then hit it from the other side and that should might be able to even it out. So we have it going now. So it took a bit of tapping all the way around and wedging things in to get it to this far. Now it's just a matter of just slowly easing it off. Make sure you don't drop anything. It's a good idea you have a bench and have, not have it near, right near the bench. And it looks like... Oh, uh, now they say you have to reset the brushes if you, the arbiter doesn't want to come out. I'll see if I can get that coming out. But I don't think it wants to, so... I might have to take that off, because I'm probably going to replace the brushes anyway, so I might as well... Take it off and see how much rust is on this. Here we go. So, the copper in that doesn't look too bad actually. All this stuff is from the casing. So, I've got rebuilt a few motors that look a lot worse than that and they work. Might need a new bearing in the end of this. Um, so yeah. Now this does look pretty shocking, but most of this is just rust from the casing, so, and probably a bit, bit of red dirt and uh, bull dust and all that in there too. So this should clean up not too bad. You can see the brushes down the bottom. The brushes are these things here. And, yeah, so let's clean just this up. That bolt out that was, if you might have seen, it was stuck in the casing, I couldn't get it out, and it has all dags and bad kind of welded on bit on the end of it, and this, this is the one which is the 10 mil one which was different to the original one, and so I don't know what happened to the original one, whether they, when they pulled it apart last time, they lost the bolt or and they had to make a new one, but you can buy these in the shops, new. And they're cheap as chips, so I don't know why they didn't do that. But yeah, I might not use this one again because I'm not happy with it. See, look, it just looks a bit like shite. Look at it. So I've got to try to pull this off, um, and so it might be a little bit seized down here in that gap. Uh, so what I've done is I've sprayed. SWD50 on it and it's like WD40 but it's about a million times better and works heaps better. 
I've sprayed that on the end here just in case these bolts are a bit stubborn. But I've sprayed a lot in there. All got moist in there, and that will sit in there, and that will start to like break down uh, any sort of particle rust that's in there, and then it'll make stuff a lot easier to clean later on. So at the moment, this thing is refusing to budge out of the inside. I can't pull it out. So what I might do is pull this off. So take these bolts out of these rails and see if I can pull this whole end off. So I've undid, done, I've undone these bolts, and this whole end is pulling off fine. That. And those gears look like they're pretty seized up, so that's why none of that was working. But they look in good nick, so that gearbox is probably fine once it's cleaned up. And we'll have a look at them. So, because this is so um, filled up with mud and uh, kind of rust residue and all old grease and all that kind of stuff it all this stuff here when it's new we'll just pull out with the gearbox but it hasn't so we'll have to say pull this to bits and um, slowly chip away at it and uh, try to free it up and then we can pull all it out so I managed to pull the drum off uh, and we can see why I couldn't pull the motor out down here if you look down there See, it's super rusty. That it's just surface rust, so so we can buff that off and it'd be like new. But it's catching up in this bearing in here, you know, sleeve sort of bearing sleeve, and so it's just not coming out. And same deal with this big aluminium bit that supports the drum. It's going to need a bit of a knock to come off. Plus, check this out. This is in the motor housing side, and it's like some insect has built his fortress in here. <laughs> it's all like eggs, egg things. Mmm. Bear Grylls would like this. He, he could get a good meal out of this. Be like. Oh. Uh, so, what I'm going to do here is I've got this. This is the motor end, and the armature is hanging underneath because this is a little bit seized in there so I'm going to spray some of this in there let it sit for a few hours and see how that works I've also put something underneath it in case it does drop out but I doubt it will so I managed to get the drives blind out uh, it was just stuck in there with all that old stuff like I said before um, here it is now the problem we have now is that this hex shaft is stuck down in the end of the brake assembly and I'm guessing it's got some more of that residue muddy just stuff in there that's all got it stuck in there so it's going to take a bit of work to get it out here in the diagram we can see it we can see that this is the shuttle shaft we want to get out we've already taken all these things out except for this shaft this shaft came out that way and it goes through all this stuff. There's that drive spline. Goes through here. And this thing here, the brake assembly, it's stuck in the, this here. So we'll have a play with that for a while and see how it goes. So I'm going to pull the gearbox part now. Uh, I've already gone around and loosened off all these little Allen heads that this cover is bolted on with. Um, it is a 532nd these so that's the size of the allen key you need uh, if it if it doesn't fit there's probably stuff all stuck in it and get something like this a pointy object and clean it out and then should you should be able to feel it drop in a little bit and then you can just tap it in a little bit and bam you've got it in there so we'll take these all off and then we'll have a look under the cover. So we now have these three pieces apart. And you can see all these different gears on here. 
see this casing. It's in alright, Nick. And we'll start pulling these apart. So we'll have a look at pulling these carriers out now. So this one just comes out. See where it's all kind of riveted over and looking there you can see that this little spindle here is just in the middle of nowhere so this should be down in here and it wasn't so that could have been causing all the troubles and these clutch plates are pretty solid I dare say that oh yeah put this in free spill and it spins around so it's really really grippy and this would mean that it, it feels good but it's got too much kind of dirty dirty old grease in there and that's really making it quite stiff so we might pull this apart and uh, just rebuild that We have this bit now, and let's see if this carrier comes out. Doesn't look like it wants to. Oh yeah. Use that uh, that thrust bearing that we were talking about because it sits on top. Yes. It's a bit hard. Alright, we'll come back to this. So I've got all the carries apart now. They were just, this was stuck in there. It's just tons and tons of this old greasy shite in there. It's just, you don't, it's, it's oh, they haven't been greased up for years properly. And it's just, it's quite disgusting. I don't even smell that good anymore. Look, it smells old. So we'll, get all these carriers cleaned up I'll just uh, scrape away all the chunky stuff and get more some more of that SWD 50 in there and what have you and clean all these up so I've cleaned these carriers out now these little tube ones they seem to be alright they all spinning around and doing their thing like this this big one. Now, teeth look alright on it, but it's just, it's sea solid, so that would have stopped the winch turning. And why, when I wanted to test the motor before, it jumped a little tiny bit and it stopped. And didn't really like it. So I'll go outside and I'll see if I can use the pressure cleaner on these. And see if I can blast any more of the old grease and rusty stuff out that I couldn't get and here we have it all the pieces stripped down well mostly I still have to somehow get this shaft out and the brake assembly which is in here now it looks alright from the inside it's just same reason rusty on the sides of that drum and we need to free that up so I'll probably put a rust penetrator in there um, here we go we'll rebuild this motor and put all new stuff in it if it needs it these turned up alright after a bit of a blast from the cleaner um, mind you this big one though the, the gears aren't turning still so there's still a lot of rubbish or blocking that this clutch works fine, no problems with that. Uh, clean this up so it's all pretty good now. Here's the solenoids. We'll put this back in. Uh, I might make a separate video for rebuilding this, but yeah, we'll give it a look because it doesn't take very long to rebuild one of these. And I'll still need to get a new one because remember that other one's broken. Plus, I still need to get this shaft out. It's 
still need to get that shaft out, but all these things will be in the second part of this video, which will be called the uh, the restoration and rebuild. So there you have it. That's how you pretty much pull apart a worn XD9000, apart from the few things, of course, which I still have to get, but that will be in the second video. All right, so down in the description, there will be all those diagrams which I had, and I said they'll be down there, so the pull apart drawings and the electrical diagrams and the test sheet for the motor and the solenoids. Also, we haven't shown, there will be, is the actual manual, the servicing manual for a worn uh, XD9000 or M series. There's a few different manuals there down here, and what they will do, um, a whole series of um, worn winches are very similar, and so you can actually use. Um, if you've got an M8000 or M1200 or whatever, that will effectively be the same setup as this. Um, the solenoid box might be a little different, but the same theory, exactly the same testing procedures. And of course, uh, lots of other manufacturers of winches are, are very, very similar to this. Uh, there might be a few differences, but overall, same testing, almost the same stripped down process. So. Basically, if you've got a winch and you really want to try pulling pieces because you don't know what's wrong with it, certainly go ahead because it's worth your while. It's a lot cheaper than, especially if you have a, um, one of these big brand kind of winches like Warn or Super Winch or Good Winch or any of these that do have a hefty price tag when you start off. Uh, it really is worth it stripping them down and rebuilding. It's especially worth servicing them because this winch hasn't been serviced enough obviously in its lifetime and that has proven why there's so much rust the grease is too old so that's clogged it up uh, yeah, it really shows you really do need a service to a winch if you want it to keep running so that concludes part one of the worn XD9000 strip down and rebuild uh, so yes if hopefully when I do get this up here Kind of area will be the the uh, link to part two. So if there is no link here yet, uh, I haven't done it yet, and it's not rebuilt yet. So I'll hopefully get that done by the end of the year. I have a busy schedule, so yeah, end of the year. That's my goal to get this done. Um, subscribers above that, and other videos are here, and I'll see you for the next video.